Okay, hello, hello, Tyler Bryden here. Hope everything's going well. Last week, there was a huge, I mean, the speed at innovation in generative AI is honestly astounding right now. It's blowing my mind, and it's hard to keep up to uh, with. I, like, I'm making videos all the time. I'm like, man, every day I got to make a new video because something's happening. Last week uh, was ex- exceptionally, um, you know, incredible. With Google, I re- re- uh, should have shared a video uh, about this first one. I'll pop that up and give you the, the old matrix um, for a second. Uh, Google unveils text to video with image and video. So image and video, um, you know, super amazing. Everyone else is doing text, uh, you know, text image. They're like, hey, hold up. Uh, Meta, we don't care about your text to video. We got some better ones. We've got a high resolution model, 24 frames per second. Blah, blah, blah. Check that out if you're interested in. And then there was sort of two mentions in Sundar's uh, tweet here. So I'll, I can pull uh, Sundar up. And and so he also talks about this one, uh, Fanaki. And he mentions that a model that generates long, coherent videos for a sequence of text problems. And that sort of sounds like garbly goosh, technical language. But the actual results of that are pretty astounding. And so I'm going to pop up the GitHub uh, link here and all as always all these resources are in below the youtube video if you're watching this or on my website if you're on my website uh and shout out to all these people uh who are doing this i've got all their sort of linkedins uh here so if you're interested in checking them out or connecting with them i mean these are amazing people doing just mind-blowing work and so definitely worthwhile connecting with if you're following that and basically what does this mean what is what is uh, sundar's uh state mean basically with this idea of that prompts that can change over time. And so basically um, a teddy bear diving in the ocean, you know, when we look at Dali, when we look at stable diffusion, now there's been all these modifications of it. Those are relatively been static images uh, and that produce a final static image. Whereas in this case, you've got um, teddy bear dives into the ocean. He emerges from the water, walks on the beach, and then it zooms out to the teddy bear uh, in the campfire by the beach. Now, I don't think it quite had him in the campfire, but still, um, incredibly powerful. You know, I hope by sort of even laying out that prompt and then seeing the video that's playing here, we can realize sort of the consequences of this or the the gravita, the gravity uh, of what this means, which is that I can now, instead of creating just one images and maybe if I want to accomplish this goal, uh, create frame by frame images, stitch them together to make a video. Fanaki is now saying, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, I'm so ashamed if I'm not, is now saying that you can uh, type in a series, basically a a prompt, um, and uh, it will understand the context, the meaning, and generate, you know, basically moving images or videos um, to make that um, possible. And the greatest example that they have is this is now a two minute video and I think we're a little bit uh, deeper into the, the final um, video here but if you watch this full thing through uh, it's just mind blowing like here, here we go so we're somewhere about the astronaut the screen behind the astronaut displays fish swimming in the sea crash zoom into the blue fish we will follow the blue fish as it swims in the dark ocean so like there is um, some just mind-blowing story that's being told through this video all of it being rendered and obviously there's oddities within the video itself there's challenges with it there's problems but we always have to take like here this is the current state and here is where we can now imagine this is going to end up there there's the zoom uh there we as it swims in the dark ocean the camera is about to point up uh to the sky through the water and so we're going to see that now uh there we go like the fact that this is possible even A few years ago, we just would have never almost dreamed that this was um, capable. I have these horrible videos where I tried to render some experiments around this, but I did not have the technical ability or, uh, you know, understanding of how quickly this was going to um, evolve. And this just opens up just unlimited, like, creative potential ability to render um, stories ongoing videos and prompt it's just absolutely um insane i'm lost watching this video as i'm speaking and articulating this to you and yeah there's a lot of challenges over ip lots of challenges over uh the quality of these videos and the quality that we're seeing so just for reference they can generate a 30 second video at 128 um uh, basically eight frames per second at 128 pixels by 128 pixels. So that's pretty low resolution, but it's doing it at a quick speed, 22 seconds, which is mind-blowingly fast. And then they're using another model to um, sort of upscale the quality of this 
uh, video to get um, you know something that can be shared on uh, you know shared on this web page and be actually you know watched with coherence of what it is because it's large enough so this is not perfect but and and it's you know generated using a long sequence of prompts um, but stacked together we have what could be a compelling short film a compelling music video um, uh, you know an introduction to uh, a TV series a show and what this then lends to you know what this then unlocks for I think many of us who are sort of following this is just um, we're heading into a world that is going to be radically different where we are creating self-serve media experiences that are personal to us that we can modify in real time uh, and already I'm going to share another video on this because I've come across it and I've got it saved somewhere as people are then applying the same uh, technology within a virtual reality space. So not only are we watching, you know, content that we're, uh, you know, is being rendered in real time based on what we want to see and watching it on a screen like I'm watching now and you're watching now, we can render that in virtual environments around us and actually participate in the environment that we're creating. And yes, 22 seconds, um, is, it seems like it could be a lot, but the actual compute power and compute time of that is going to de continue to decrease and leave us in a space where we can render those vi environments, um, you know, almost systematically in real time. And, uh, you know, that's a going to be a hard thing to articulate when we think of just how um, immersive uh, those environments can be, even with the current iterations of technology like Oculus and Quest and all this, wait until we upgrade these headsets, uh, upgrade the resolution, and then can also deliver the creation of that resolution, um, you know, at high quality so that our eyes and, you know, so that we become fully immersed. And that is where we are headed. Uh, there is no doubt about it. The interest of this is too high. Uh, it's not going away. And with the amount of feedback and adoption and usage of these platforms, none of these companies are going to peel away from uh, continuing to innovate in the space. It's just too exciting, too valuable, too meaningful, and it has such significant consequences for um, you know uses specifically in personal life. But we'll continue to see uh, uses of this um, in business application. And once you know business applications, we many of us live in this capitalistic structure. Once those are applied and adopted, um, those will just continue to accelerate and create value, whether it's designing products in real time, media experiences, you know, all of these things are incredibly fascinating, exciting, and world changing. So I just wanted to highlight this. I have a couple, you know, other links from stories that are worthwhile, um, some of them covering Imogen specifically, um, which is super cool, but I've got a video on that, and then other ones taking a look at um, Finaki. So all these resources, all these links uh, will be in here. There is an actual paper talking a bit about how this is done. Um, for most of us, this will look a little bit like gibberish, but there are wonderful, intelligent people who that does not look like gibberish, and I wish I was you sometimes, um, but unfortunately I'm not. And you can see uh, a lot of the math and science uh, going behind this, and it's amazing that they're sort of sharing this out in such detail for something that I think can have such large consequences uh, here. And there was one last part that they did highlight that was super interesting, um, which was in the original tweet as well too, uh, from Dimitri, Dimitri Rue, uh, which was basically, it can also be conditioned on both still images and text. So this means that it can animate an existing image to do so in a controlled way. In this case, they start with an image and then they animate that image by quickly zooming a camera into the eye. So we can actually take static images even other static AI generated things and then expand upon those with, uh, um, with a model like Finaki. And, uh, if you don't think that's incredible, I don't know what you think is incredible. We'd love to hear. Uh, I'm already at 10 minutes blabbering on about this. So I hope you enjoyed. I got some insight or at least shared, uh, you know, some of the enthusiasm that I have, cause this is just blowing my mind and I'm so excited to see, uh, the continued innovation and finding my own ways to contribute by at least documenting it. And, uh, I, I thank you for being a part of that journey. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.